Okay, so we're going to make a start today. Um, the plan uh, for today, we're going to be looking at um, understanding day books and control accounts. Okay, we're going to be doing the first live session um, and covering these topics just to um, give you guys a bit more understanding um, and help you out with a couple of these topics. We're going to run through um, some knowledge factors. We're going to run through some examples and then hopefully um, any questions um, we can go through at the end. We are recording this session so that we can send to you um, and you can use this as a resource to look back on. Um, so just within the time period of the session, which we're looking at around 45 minutes, um, we'll run through that first and then we'll pick up any questions at the end, give us the opportunity to then discuss anything that you might have been a bit unsure on or we can look at any specific questions. So like we say, we're going to be discussing understanding day books and control accounts. OK, so at this point, it's important to understand that every trans transaction within the business must be recorded within the accounts. OK, and to support that, we need a business document. OK, we need a supporting document to evidence all transactions actions that we post in the accounts okay so for example when we make a sale our supporting business document is an invoice um if we've got any returns we use a credit note um same applies with discounts we issue a credit note for that too so it's all about having a, a business document to evidence every transaction okay now when we look at the the full process okay we initially have that transaction, we have that document to support that, and that's entered into our day books, okay? So the day books that we're gonna be looking at are all on screen on that top row, okay? They all feed into the ledger accounts. The purpose of us having day books is it's easier at this point to identify any potential mistakes we want to make sure that our accuracy of inputting into the accounts is 100% if possible. It's a lot easier to correct errors in a day book than it is in an account system. Okay. Depending on the size of the business, there may be different policies. Um, it may be that if you're a smaller business and you only make 10 sales a week, for example, that those entries invoices are entered in on a weekly basis. For a much larger business, it might be on a daily basis. Okay, there will tend to be um, maybe an approval as well of either a manager or a senior member in the team that will sign off that everything's accurate in the day books and they can be entered into the ledger accounts. Okay, and that's what we'll be looking at today. We'll be looking at this process through from the day books to the ledgers, we're going to look at some transactions for each and we're going to post them into the ledger accounts. And then we're going to be looking at the control accounts there as well. OK, that then does follow to trial balance and then final accounts. That's something we'll pick up in a different session. Um, so for today, just the day books and the ledger accounts. OK, so. First things first. We're going to look at oh. perfect. Okay, so we're going to look at the sales day book first. Okay, and um, we've got some invoices from the 9th of January. Okay, which we're going to enter into the sales day book. Okay, we've got three customers here and we've got three invoices. So looking at the first one. We've got invoice ref 0459. Okay. All of these are dated on the 9th of January. Okay. So we can put the 9th of January in there. Okay. First one is going to be B Jones. And the invoice number is 0459. Okay. Now, what we're told at this point is that we're given an invoice for £984 plus 
VAT. Okay. Our £984 is our net figure. Okay, so we can enter that into the net column. Okay, and we need to add 20% VAT on that into the VAT column. Okay, we can work that out um, by dividing by 100 and times in by 20. We divide by 100 to get 1%. And we can divide by 20 to get our 20% VAT figure, okay, which should give us £196.80. You can equally divide the net figure by five because there's five 20s in 100%. So whatever works best for you, both calculations will give you the same. You can then add those together to give us our gross figure of £1,180.80. So that's our first invoice. If anyone does have any questions, by the way, do feel free to type them into the chat box and we um, will pick them up with a Q&A at the end. In the, it will be in the Q&A box. Okay. So then to the next two. So again, we know all of these are dated on the 9th of January, so we can enter that in there. Second customer, I've got S. Hudson. And that invoice reference is 0460. We can work out the net fat and total figures in exactly the same way we did with the example above. So we're given the net £428. We can work out the 20% VAT on that. And we're dividing it by five. So that'll give us 85 pounds and 60 pence. And we can then add those together to give us our gross figure of 513 pounds and 60 P. Okay. Now the third example, this customer is P. Smith. Okay. Invoice ref 0461. In this case, we're given the invoice amount of £1,548. Well, this includes VAT at 20%. Okay. This means we're dealing with our gross figure here, where we was dealing with our net figure in the two previous examples. So our £1,548 can go into our gross column, which is our total column, okay? And we then need to work out the net and the VAT on that amount, okay? So our gross figure is equal to 120% because it's our 100% net plus 20% VAT. So instead, what we can do is instead of dividing by 100 to get 1%, we'll divide by 120 to get 1% and then multiply that by 20 to get our VAT figure. Okay. So we'll do 1,548 divided by 120 times by 20 will give us 258 pounds VAT. And the difference will then be our net figure. Okay, so two different types of ways of looking at transactions there, one working from the net and adding VAT, the other working from the gross and splitting the net and the VAT, okay? We can then put our total figures in to the total column. as follows. Excellent. So that's our sales day book completed, okay? Following on from that, on the 14th of January, 
we've got some credit notes that we now need to enter into our sales returns table. Okay, so this will relate to any potential faulty or damaged goods that have been sent to the customer, which are being returned to the business. Okay, credit notes have been issued for these, so we need to enter them into the sales returns table. So both of these are on the 14th of January. So we can add that into there. And we'll add in the customer names for each of those as well. Excellent. And then our reference. Okay. It's important for us to be able to identify every transaction. So we'll need a unique reference for each. Okay. So first one for S Hudson, got a credit note for £88 plus 20% VAT. So we can put £88 in our net column. And then we need to work out 20% VAT on that. So we can divide that by five or divide by 100 and times by 20. And that should give us a VAT figure of £17.60. Okay. And we can total those together. And that will give us a gross figure of £105.60p. Next, we're given a gross amount to work from here. So £96, including VAT at 26 at a 20%, sorry. So we'll enter 96 into our total column. We're going to divide that by 120 to get 1%, multiply by 20 to get our VAT figure of 16. And then the difference will then be our net figure. Okay, so 96 gross, 16 VAT will give us 80 pounds in the net column. Okay, excellent. And I've just noticed, by the way, just while we're at this point, um, the chat is disabled, but questions can be placed in the Q&A section, just in case anyone's tried to, to message anything there. Um, so you can use the Q&A section for any questions. Okay, and now we can total these up. So total net will be 168 pounds. Total VAT will be 33 pounds, 60p. And the gross will be 201 pounds, 60. Okay, so again, two different ways of looking at how we enter the transactions there. Okay, so we've looked at sales day book and we've looked at sales returns day book. OK, we're now going to look at the discounts allowed day book. OK, and this is when our customers will take advantage of a prompt payment discount that is offered. So a prompt payment discount is an incentive for customers to pay their invoices early. The terms will be stated on the invoice. For example, the invoice might have a 30 day to pay period but there might be an extra note in the terms which says if a customer pays within 10 days, then they might be entitled to a 5% discount. Okay. And it's only the prompt payment discount, which is entered into the discount stay books. Okay. And that's what we've got in this example. We've got two customers. So they've paid the invoice within that term time stated, and they've taken advantage of a prompt payment discount. OK, so we need to enter the below PPDs, which are dated from the 16th of January into our day book. OK, and we're going to look at two different ways of working these out, because this is this can be an area which um, can cause a bit of confusion um, because there's different calculations which we need to look at. OK. So zero, zero, four, seven, and zero, zero, four, eight. Okay. And what will happen when a customer does take advantage of a prompt payment discount is a credit note will be issued for that 
discount amount. Okay, so the reference number will be a credit note number. So looking at the first one here then, so B Jones, the invoice total was £1,180 ATP, and that included VAT at 20%. And we need to less 5% taken as a prompt payment discount. So it's the discount amount we need to enter into the day book. Okay. Now we are going to have to look at first of all, how we're going to calculate this amount. And it's always good to look at the starting figure to be able to follow through some calculations. So we know we're dealing with the gross figure here. Okay, we're dealing with 1,180, including that, at 20%. Okay, so it's 5% of that figure, which is our discount amount. Okay, so we can do £1,180.80, okay? And if we times that by 0 0.05, that will give us what the 5% figure of that is, okay? Which will be £59.4p, okay? If you times a number by zero point and then what the percentage is, we'll give you that amount. Okay, now we are working from the gross figure here because that's the amount that the, um, the invoice is for. It includes VAT. So that £59 and 4p can be entered in our total column because we're working from the gross figure there. What we then need to do is work out the VAT and the net from that £59 and 4p, which is our gross discount. Okay, so we'll work out the VAT first. So we'll do £59 and 4p. We'll divide that by six, because we're working with a gross figure. Equally, you could divide by 120 times by 20, either way works. And that should give us £9.84 VAT, okay, on that discount. So we can enter that in our VAT column, okay? And the difference between the two of those, so £59.4 minus £9.84 equals our net amount okay which is 49.20 net so we can enter that in here okay so that's one way of looking at this type of transaction remember what amount you're dealing with we're dealing with the gross amount at the start because it's including VAT so we can work out five percent of that figure to get our discount but then just remember that the discount figure is also the gross amount. So we need to split that. Okay. Now, the second one, we're going to look at this in a slightly different way. So S. Hudson has paid £500.76 after taking a 2.5% prompt payment discount. So what this is, what this means is this is the amount that has been paid after the discount has been deducted. OK, so we need to enter what the discount amount is into our discount allowed day book. Now, one way of looking at this, OK, because we're looking at this in a slightly different way, is the amount that's actually been paid, that £500.76, isn't equal to 100% of the invoice total. In fact, because the customer's taken a 2.5% discount, that £500.76 is actually equal to 97.5%, okay? And that's how we're going to work back to our original invoice total, okay? And it goes back to how we work out 1% and then go back up to where we need to be. So we're going to do £500.76, and we're going to divide that by 97.5. That will give us 
1%. And then we're going to multiply by 100 to get us back up to that 100% invoice total. Okay. And that's how we will approach this type of question. So that should give you 500 and 13 pounds 60 okay now this 513 pounds 60 that's our original invoice total okay that's the gross amount so the difference between the two is what our discount figure will be okay which is £12.84, okay? So we've worked out £12.84 is our gross discount figure, okay? Now that we've got that figure, again, we need to split the net and the VAT. So we can do £12.84, divided by six, and that will give us £2.14.80. So we can enter that into here. And then the difference between those two is our net figure, which is £10.70. Okay, so a little bit more working out with that one. And... The way that the two credit notes are given to you are typical ways that you will get asked these type of questions, okay? You will either be given what the invoice total is, and then you'll be told what the discount percentage is, okay? Just remember what figure you're working with, because in this case, we've been working, so in the first one uh, for B. Jones, we were working from the gross figure. So remember when we work out the discount, that's also a gross figure for the discount. So we need to split the net and VAT from those. And then also look at the amount that is sometimes paid. And remember that it's the best way to go about that is to work out what the 1% figure is to then work back to the original invoice amount. You can then look at the difference, which you know will be the amount taken for the discount and then account for that accordingly with the net and VAT amounts there too. Okay, so yeah, a little bit more on that one, but they're the type of styles of question you'll be get given. You'll be given, so important to realise the methodology behind it. Okay, so now what we're going to do, um, we've looked at our sales day book, we've looked at our sales returns day book, and we've looked at our discounts allowed day book. Okay, and we're going to post these now to the ledger accounts. Okay, so I've already populated from what I've written above into the sales day book. Okay, so they're already entered in there. And what we're going to do is post these to the accounts. Okay, now because we're dealing with sales here, the three accounts that we're going to use are our sales account, we're going to use our VAT account. And we're also going to be using our receivables ledger control account. Okay. And this is where we're touching on to our first control account here. Okay. Now, all of these transactions are dated on the same date. Okay. So we don't need to enter them individually into the sales account. We can enter them as one total figure from each of the columns. Okay. So first of all, in the sales account, okay, it's our net figure, which is posted to the sales account, and it's going to be on the credit side. Okay. It's going to be on the credit side of our sales account because our sales account is an income account. Okay. I'm going to put the details as SDB for sales day book. Okay. And then we're going to put the net figure in there, 2,702. Okay, that's taken from the net figure within the sales table. 
because that's the actual income for the business. Okay. We then also post the VAT to the VAT account, and that also is posted on the credit side. Okay, so 9th of January, I'm going to use the total there as well. We use the same reference sales day book, and that will be five hundred and forty pounds and forty p. Okay, that's the amount of VAT that we've collected from the customer. Okay, and we do have to pay that over to HMRC. Okay, so that amount of VAT is a liability for the business because we owe that to HMRC when we complete our next return. The final figure is our gross figure, and that's going to be posted in the receivables ledger control account. And that's going to be debited. Still going to use the same reference. And that will be for £3,242.40p. and Okay. It's a debit in the receivables ledger control account because that's the account that shows the total amount which is outstanding from all of our customers. Okay. Goods or services have been supplied. The invoices have been raised and sent, but we haven't actually received the money from our customers yet because we've sold to them on credit terms. Okay. So our receivables ledger control account is actually a current asset account because it shows the amount that's outstanding from our customers. Okay. And that's how we'd post to the general ledger accounts from the sales day book. Now, remember, double entry bookkeeping occurs within the general ledger accounts. So for every total debit entry, there's got to be an opposite, an equal credit entry. Okay. And we know that from here because our gross amount on the debit side equals the same total as our net and VAT amounts on the credit side. Now, what we also have to do for each of these is post to the individual customer account that's in the receivables ledger account. Okay, so the receivables ledger account is outside of the general ledger and is a record of all our individual customer accounts. It means we can go into any account for each specific customer and we can view all the activity which has happened within that account. Okay. And this is where we do post the individual transactions from our sales day book. Okay. So we're going to post each of the above into their accounts. So still going to use the same date. I'm going to use the same reference. Now, in B. Jones' account, we're going to use the gross amount, okay, because that's the amount that the customer needs to pay us. So that's £1,180.80p, and okay? The accounts, the individual customer accounts in the receivable ledger accounts mirror the receivables ledger control account within the general ledger. When we say that mirrors, we mean that the debit and credit entries are posted on the same side because it's the totals from all of the individual customer accounts and the receivables ledger, which are pulled through um, to, the, um, to the receivables ledger control account. Okay, so next we can put in the amount for S. Hudson. Yeah, excellent. Okay, perfect. Right, okay, so we got up to um, post into the ledger accounts. Okay, um, so I've quickly entered those in there um, into each of the individual customer accounts. Okay, remembering that these are posted on the debit side of the customer account because all of these are then pulled through into the receivables ledger control account within the general ledger, okay, with all the other accounts, okay, the receivables ledger accounts 
are just there um, in the, as a separate record. So we can see the activity within each customer account. Okay, so we've entered the totals from the sales day book into each customer account. Okay, we then have to also do the same with our sales returns day book. Okay, so we had the two transactions at this point. We had the two credit notes, okay, relating to S. Hudson and P. Smith. And just as we did before, okay, they're all dated on the same day, so we can use um, the total figures from the day book. Okay, we don't need to post these individually. Okay. So our sales returns, okay, we're going to be posted to the sales returns account, okay, and again, we're using the total figure there, so we can enter the date of 14th of Jan for the reference as sales day book, and the amount being £168, okay, remembering that the sales returns account is an expense to the business. It's the return of goods, okay, which were sold, okay. So that's goods coming back to the business. We've also then got to use our VAT account, account for the VAT, so we can post that on the debit side as well. And again, we use the total figure there £33.60, okay. Now I've left the credit entry that we already posted for, our, for the sales on the credit side, okay. The VAT um, on the returns, okay, actually reduces the amount that we owe to HMRC, okay, because we don't need to pay the VAT on the returns as a, as a liability, okay. So it, or it reduces the amount that we owe, okay for those goods that have been returned, okay? And in the receivables ledger control account, we're going to post credit entry for the gross amount, which is £201.60p, okay? So originally we had £3,242.40, that amount was outstanding from our customers, okay? However, we have had some returns, so we need to reduce the balance on the account because that amount is no longer outstanding from the customer, okay? We mentioned that the receivables ledger control account is an asset account because the balance will show the total amount owed from customers, which means because it has a debit balance, any debit entries will increase the balance on the account. Any credit entries will decrease the balance on the account, okay? Returns will decrease the amount that our customers owe to us. So our sales returns are posted on the credit side, okay? And that works the same within our receivables ledger accounts, okay? When we're posting those to the individual customer accounts. Okay, so first one, S. Hudson, dated on 14th of the 1st, reference sales returns. Right, just, um, just as a note to apologize, the reference the details should be sales returns day book, okay? And that applies to each of those as well. Okay, apologies, I missed that one. Okay, so that's for the amount of 105.60. And then in P. Smith's account, That will be for the amount of 96 pounds. 
Okay. And that's our sales returns. Okay. So remember that we've got to post to the general ledger accounts as well as the individual customer accounts within the receivables ledger. Okay, next we have our discounts allowed daybook. Okay, so again, follow the same process, posting the net amount. This time it's going to the discounts allowed account. Okay, and it's going on the debit side. Okay. And the reason it's on the debit side is because we've allowed that customer a discount. Okay. We've let them buy the goods for a cheaper amount than what we originally had on the invoice total. So we have to bear the expense for that discount. Okay. So that discount that we've allowed is an expense to the business. So we could put the total net amount in there. Okay. Do the same with the VAT. Okay. And that will be for the total of that column, 1198. Okay. And then on the credit side, of the receivables ledger control account. Okay, or 71.88, which is the total from the gross column. Okay, so again, working in a similar way to what the sales returns did in the control account, we've allowed a discount for a cust to the customers. And that means that the outstanding balance is being reduced. So the balance on the account is being reduced because that amount is no longer outstanding from the customer. Okay, so you can see that the common thread is that we're still using the VAT account, we're still using the receivables ledger control account, it's the net figure which is posted to the different accounts based on the transactions that we're dealing with, okay. And again, we need to update the individual customer account within the receivables ledger, okay posting the totals to each of those. Okay, so again, mirroring what's in the control account. Okay, B James was 59 pounds and 4p. And then the same for S Hudson, okay. And we can see what this begins to look like now that we're posting different types of transactions in the account. We can see this is starting to populate with activity. Okay. And they're the type of things that the business will want to look at. Okay. When we're looking specifically at individual customer accounts. Okay. So that kind of runs through the process of entering those documents into our day books and then posting from our day books into our general ledger accounts as well as our receivables ledger accounts okay when we're looking at the control account okay we can look specifically at where transactions are posted okay so we know that this is an asset account which means it will have a debit balance. Okay. Therefore, anything that increases the balance is posted on the debit side. Anything that decreases the balance is posted on the credit side. Okay. You do cover control accounts in more detail as you move on to the second unit as well um so if that's new to you it's a good introduction at this point now to understand the behavior of that type of account but you will come on to that in a lot more detail okay 
The balance brought down, the opening balance is always going to be a debit balance. So that's always going to be on the debit side. Sales made on credit terms are always going to increase the balance because it increases the amount outstanding for customers. So that's going to be posted on the debit side, as well as any returned checks. Okay, so these are going to be checks that have received, checks that we've posted in the accounts as receipts from customers. However, at a later point, that check's bounced um, and hasn't been able to be cashed in. Okay, we need to put that check back into the accounts um, and that amount becomes outstanding from the customer again until another check is sent. Okay, on the credit side, the items that will decrease the, ba the balance on the account, so will reduce the amount that the customer owes, that will be our sales returns, so any returns of damaged or faulty goods. Customer receipts, so that will be any payments that customers make, any discounts that we've allowed, and any irrecoverable debts. The recoverable debts you'll cover at a later stage, but it's effectively um, any debts that we know we can't receive from the customer and we write off after a certain amount of time. Okay. The balance carried down will also always be on the credit side because we know the balance brought down will always be on the debit side. Okay. So that can really have you, help you to have that to hand to understand where things are posted within the control accounts okay now i've already populated um the purchases purchases returns and discounts received day books okay rather than going through all of those types of calculations again calculations are worked out in exactly the same way um you'll be you know given invoices which are posted within the sales day book okay so again Invoices are detailed there with the reference and with any purchase returns, you'll be using credit notes and discounts received. We'll be using credit notes as well. OK, the actual format of the day book is the same. The only difference is that instead of customer name, we've got supplier name. OK. So again, purchases posted in the purchases day book, purchase returns in the purchase returns day book, and any discounts we've received. So that's any prompt payment discounts that we've taken advantage of when we've paid our suppliers their invoice that's recorded in the discounts received day book. Now, when we post these to the ledger accounts, there is a slight difference um, in the examples that we've got on screen now compared to when we looked at sales, okay? And the difference is um, we have got transactions which are dated on different dates, okay? That's the only difference. So all of these dates are on separate dates, okay? Whereas before they were grouped together, and post it all on the same day, okay? Which just means we're going to post them separately in the accounts rather than as one total figure, okay? So posting our purchases day book to the general ledger accounts, okay? Same process, but we've just posted these separately because they're on different dates, okay? So our purchase account is an expense account, okay? It's the actual expense that the business has to pay on the purchase of goods or services, okay? Goods or services that they intend to resell. Any VAT that we pay on purchases or expenses, we can reclaim from HMRC, okay, which means the VAT account is debited, okay. This is classed as an asset, these transactions, because we can reclaim that amount from HMRC, okay. So it's what HMRC owes us this time, okay. And in the payables ledger control account, Okay, instead of this being an asset account like the receivables control account, 
This is a liability account because it shows the total amount that we owe to our suppliers, okay? So these are for all the, the goods or services we've bought, okay? We've received the invoice. We haven't yet paid the invoice, okay? Therefore, we owe our suppliers that amount, okay? It's always the gross figures which are posted to the control accounts with the net figure going to the purchase account, which is the actual expense, okay? And just as we did before, we need to update our individual supplier accounts, okay, which are in the payables ledger accounts, okay? So again, mirroring what's in the payables ledger control account, it will show the outstanding amount to each of these suppliers, which means we can look specifically in each account to view that activity. Okay. Same applies with our purchases returns day book. Okay, so we'd use our purchases returns account. Okay, we would credit this account. Okay, you can think of that as its opposite to purchases, which is we know purchases are a debit because they're an expense. Okay, purchases returns act as a form of income because we um, no longer owe that um, amount to our suppliers. They're actually um, goods that we've sent back to the supplier, whether they be faulty or damaged. Okay, we also cannot reclaim the VAT on those goods sent back to the supplier. So we need to credit our VAT account, okay? Because we can no longer claim that VAT, okay? We have to pay that back. So we can see we've already got our debit entries in the VAT account for the purchases. And then we credit with the purchase returns. And then finally, in the payables ledger control account, okay, because it's a liability account and it will have a credit balance, anything that decreases the amount that we owe to suppliers will be debited. So we debit our payables ledger control account with the amount in returns because we no longer owe that to our suppliers. Okay. And the same applies within our payables ledger account okay we need to update each individual supplier account to show that that amount is no longer outstanding and finally looking at discounts received so this is prompt payment discounts that we've taken advantage of we've play, paid invoices to our suppliers earlier rather than later, okay? Discounts received is credited, discounts received account, okay? And again, enter those transactions in there. If they were dated on the same day, we'd just use the net figure, but we're showing these separately just because they relate to different dates, okay? Remembering that the disc discounts received account is discounts that we've received, so it's form of income for the business. The VAT account is also credited, okay, in a similar way to how we did with the purchases returns. With the payables ledger control account being debited, because we've received a discount, we're reducing the balance on that account. Okay, and again, notice that the debits and the credits in these three accounts within the general ledger, the totals will all balance, okay? Which means our overall accounts will also balance, our trial balance will also balance, okay? And then again, following the process, we update our individual supplier accounts. And just covering the payables ledger control account again, so we know that it's a liability account, okay, which means it's going to have a credit balance. 
So any credit entries will increase the balance. Any debit entries will decrease the balance. Okay. Balance brought down will always be on the credit side and any purchases made on credit terms will increase the balance. It increases the amount that's outstanding to our suppliers. However, any discounts that we've received, any purchases returns, or any supplier payments that we make will decrease the amount that we owe to our suppliers. So we'll therefore decrease the balance on the account. Okay, and because a balance brought down is always going to be on the credit side, the balance carried down will always be on the debit side. Now, it is just worth mentioning at this point, this is the final um, point for today. There are three other day books that we do have to mention as well. We're not going to go um, specifically into detail with these just yet. Um, these are covered in their own separate topics because there's a lot more um, there's a lot more knowledge that goes with that. Um, but the cash book, the petty cash book, and the journal are also books of prime entry. Okay, they're also our day books. Okay. The cash book will record the money coming in and out of the business through the bank and cash account. Okay. So just as an example, cash book that we've got on screen there. Okay. On the debit side of the cash book, that's going to show income into the business. The credit side is going to show the expense, those payments that are made. Okay. And we use two columns. Okay which basically just show the cash and bank accounts, okay? So instead of showing one account, we're showing two accounts in this day book, okay? The petty cash book, um, similar to um, how the cash account works, okay? The actual debit side of the petty cash book is just this receipts column here. Okay, so our petty cash book is just used for minor payments. Okay, there's not going to be a lot of big transactions which are in there. They're just going to be, um, you know, things like postage, things like travel, any supplies for the office or anything like that. Okay, the only debit entries that we tend to see um, within the petty cash book are the amounts that we have to transfer from the bank account. Um, just to top up, um, just to top up the account, really. Okay, you can think of that as a petty cash tin, a physical tin in an office with money in. Okay, we have to top that up. Um, so the actual debit entries within that account will only be restoring that amount. Okay, the credit side of the cash book is everything else that you can see there. There's a little bit more analysis, so you can see what's going into that, um, and they'll be all of the the minor payments okay but as i say that is something that's covered in its own separate topic because there's a lot more that goes into that but it is worth mentioning at this point that that is also a day book and finally the journal is also a day book as well the journal is used for non-regular transactions um those type of one-off transactions um maybe any adjustments which are needed in any accounts or any corrections to any errors okay again it's all about having that supporting document that goes with transactions that are entered into the accounts because we can't just change things as we wish there needs to be a supporting document that goes with that so everything that doesn't fall into the above you'll at least have a journal entry which can be used to support the transaction which has been made. Okay. So that covers everything within the session. Um, apologies for the, um, the dropout in the middle of the session there. I hope that didn't cause too much disruption. Um, does anybody have um, any questions that they would like to go through? Um, is anyone unsure of anything there? Anything that would like to go over again or have another look? Feel free to post anything within the Q&A section. Um, we can have a look at that.
alternatively alternatively if you've got no questions now do feel free that if you'd prefer to um drop me an email um or schedule a phone call you know more than happy to spend some individual time if you'd like to go through anything in particular okay um i can just see that coming up Teresa. when is the next session um so this is the first session and um hopefully we're looking at scheduling some more we're going to be looking at other topics um which we think might be useful um but it would be useful from everyone here as well um just to provide a little bit of feedback on how you think today has gone if there's anything that you would change or if there's anything that you would like covered uh, we've got an idea of the topics that we want to cover in upcoming sessions but it's always good to hear what you guys think as well um so that would be really useful if you've got any feedback there and we can um we can have a look at that as well but i'll follow up um we'll follow up with any um upcoming sessions uh yeah it's a good question there ben um Again, um, looking at the, the day books here, it's definitely when you're doing your um, AAT course, you are looking at this mainly from a manual perspective. And so it does look a little bit different when you are using an actual accounting software system. Um, again, um, I, I would say, yeah, um, it may be that um, on a smaller scale, it may be you know more common, um, but each business will have its own policies and its own procedures and the way they do things um it's just your day books are a really good method of just kind of eliminating any mistakes um at that point before uh entries are posted into the accounts it's a lot easier to correct a mistake in a day book um than it is within an account system once everything's um been entered in there but for the purpose of your course um and studying the AAT syllabus um, you'll definitely be using day books on a regular basis. Okay. Um, anything else that anyone would like to discuss? Any other questions? No? Okay. Well, if anything does come up, guys, do feel free to drop me an email. I'm more than happy to, you know, follow up um, with any queries that you may have. If there's anything else at all, you know, that you're struggling with on the course or you've got any questions, then you know, I'm always here to support. So just let me know. I'm happy to go through anything with you. Thank you for dialing in today. Um, really appreciate you taking the time to, to go through this. And I hope it's been useful. Um, and we'd greatly appreciate any feedback that you might have. Do let me know if there's any specific topics that you guys would like to have a look at as well. Okay, we'll call it a day there. Thank you very much for everyone. And I shall speak to you soon. Take care.